Dungeons with Friends podcast with Kevin, your dungeon master. What fresh hell is this? Brooks. Ow! John. Sniff your shit. Look, they do weird things as brothers and sisters. So welcome to Dungeons with Friends! <laughs> no. We're not starting with that. Yeah. You can't stop me. You guys can't stop me. No. I'm mad with power. But You're Audacity not. or whatever used to record can. Yes, it can. Right. It Apparently can it can just will. fuck whatever it wants. Mm. Let's uh, not have that as the intro, please, for the love of God. You can't stop me. And so, like yes. To you up to the sometimes. Uh, oh. So, my dear listeners, we've just come back from the Bell County Rodeo. Uh, Ooh, it's so the roar of the sun. The crowd. It's a wide of enough gold in the book of human. Next go rounds. rounds. Yeah, uh, so this uh, this that round might sound extra right country. Whoa. Okay. We really need Luke Casey. And I'm also, I'm also about half in the bag, so. Anyway. And spilled scotch all over you. You know what? It's got scotch crotch. <laughs> yeah. ah! Ooh, eat your heart out, Matt Mercer. Get you drunk like scotch and <laughs> taste like Splenda. <laughs> I'll tell you, Matt Mercer has never once DM'd with a crotch full of scotch. You don't know Not that. Not that you know of. I'm willing to wager that. <laughs> I still, every time I tell people like what your position is in the podcast, uh, I feel like they're going to go, what kind of a position is DM? Because it always sounds like something dirty. It sounds, yeah, because one, it sounds like BM, and then yeah. there's the dungeon aspect of it. Well, not just that, but DM also sounds stands for so many things now. Well, yeah, and it's like, yeah, slip into my Great DM. Message. Yeah. All right. Like when I'm singing Lizzo, I'm like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Might have get your name. He already in my DMs. What? My DMs. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel it's ne- necessary for me to tell you I love you. So this is a, this is an actual really play- off the rails. So this is an actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast. <laughs> we swear. <laughs> you wouldn't know it listening. Farno's dead. Yes, Farno the Dread is dead. Mm, I'm gonna be saying that for the rest of my the, life. The, and it makes me feel even better every time you do. Yeah. So we start the next campaign. So like when I'm dead and I have a tombstone, it's gonna say I fucking killed Farno. So you guys. Uh, have just spent two weeks uh, learning some different crafts. Uh, you learned some stuff from Andorra. Uh, Hammer, you learned some stuff uh, working with uh, the, the, the head forger, the, the head, yeah, dude. Uh, and uh, Doria, uh, uh, you have, or whatever. Davin. I'm gonna, yeah, what, what would you prefer to be called? Uh, Davin. 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 You have spent your time uh, pickpocketing <laughs> and thieving, shoplifting however you gain your money. Uh, so two weeks have passed since our last session. Uh, the And so you guys are presumably all staying, I guess, at the Dreadlock. I guess you're maybe saying it at Aldred Manor. Uh, but I'm Hammer... Saying it Aldred Manor. Yeah, you're saying at Aldred Manor. Seraphina Hammer, you're saying, I suppose, at the Dreadlock. Yep. Uh, two weeks have passed. You now know that this is about the time that you had uh, told Andita that you were going to battle at the Battle Barn. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I believe it'll be tonight. Uh, the sun rises on this beautiful Capitus morning. Uh, as always, of course, the season is moving uh, into colder seasons, and so you wake up. It is pretty dang cold outside. Uh, the sort of sea breeze whips through the, the streets of Capitus without the, the general mountainous area that's around it normally. Um, it's an unusually cold in Capitus these days. Uh, so, of course, uh, the dew is somewhat uh, frosted outside of the dreadlock um, across the street. You can see that it's frosted on the curbs, and uh, you know, you know you're going to be wearing your heavier cloaks today. So, doesn't faze me. What are you all doing? Well, I think we probably need to talk strategy for the battle tonight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. I've not battled at the Battle Barn, so I don't I really know what to I expect. I don't ex- um, know what to expect either. Nandita, can you give us kind of a rundown, maybe? Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to assume you're, I'm going to assume you're there. Uh, don't worry, Davin. No, right. no, no. I have a question. Are Davin's parents still alive? Yes. Okay, so they're at the manor. Uh, yes. So they're going to be aware that I haven't gone back to school yet, so I'm going to need to either be coming up with a new identity or coming up with the reason why I'm not back in school. Yes. Okay. Do you want to play that? 
Yeah, so I'm just saying, so I need to plan a heist quickly, like, kind of thing. Yeah, you'd, you'd kind of know you need to be, yeah. be up at the head, yeah. The only reason it's not happening now is because I'm not prepared for it. Well, neither am I. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yes, so you, you look at Nandina, and you, you kind of ask her what happens, and she says, well, you know, uh, they, uh, the, the Battle Barn is, is kind of this, uh, it's, it's just like, it's maybe like 40 by 60 feet, and you're you're fighting, and they go in three rounds. The first round is is the hand to hand combat. Uh, the second round is the melee combat, and the third round is the the, the spell casting combat. Um, she goes, uh, you know, it's just kind of the first person to get knocked unconscious loses. There's no like time limit or or anything like that. Um, you know, it's just kind of whoever gets knocked out first loses. Um, you know, and the one thing that is kind of interesting is they change it up all the time. They have like a couple of different like like layouts and like settings, and they like magically change it like all the time, and it's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's really it's pretty neat. It makes it fun because like you know after fighting there for God, I fought there for like four years. Yeah, it keeps it like spicy to like make it different every time. I'm kind of excited to go back, honestly. Yeah. And she like kind of like cracks her knuckles, and she like in there her little kind of like wiry form. You can tell that she's real excited to get back in there. Well, Nandita, I'm super glad I'm on your team. I am excited for my first time. Yeah. So I, I, I guess it's gonna be me and you, and we say Hammer is gonna do it as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yes. Very cool. Uh. Is there anything we need to do to prepare? No. Just go in and... Stretch out. <laughs> and she, like, kind of does well, some, like, anyway. some real it, crazy stretches. Is the best... So we got to win how many rounds? All three of them? Well, so, yeah, it's it's best two out of three. So, you know, if, if we win two of the three rounds, we win. She goes, and I think you win a purse for each round, and you win for having won the majority of the rounds. She goes, I can't remember exactly. They may have even changed it. But when I fought, it was 500 gold per round... And then you win a thousand if you win the majority for the entire Ooh. team. Five hundred gold. Yeah, yeah. So like, if you won two rounds and you won the majority with that, you would win. What's that? Thousand. Thousand. Gold. Yeah, two thousand gold. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do blessing of the forge on Nadia's hands. And add okay. One, add one damage. Let me look at it because I think it has to be on a weapon. Weapon or armor, yeah. And I don't. Well, I've, uh, I'm gonna say no because it's a simpler martial weapon, uh, and her hands aren't technically weapons. Although it's real badass and like to call them weapons, I'm gonna say no. You can cast it on your hammer, or on you my can, armor. I think not I'm... your armor, but yeah, you can cast it on your hammer or any weapon that Seraphina has. What about uh, Nadia's armor? That. She's not just more armor. Not even clothing? No. Damn it. Okay, I'm going to go with using it on my hammer. Then. Okay, yeah. You're welcome to use it on your hammer. So yeah, it'll be plus one. So it's plus four to the blood in now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so you do that. Uh, anything else you guys are doing before the fight? I th- I'm going to take off my cloak. Oh. Okay. I'm obviously in the stands for this. Okay, so you guys, I, you guys are not at the battle barn. As of now, no. you're still in the dreadlock. You guys just head over that way whenever it's the time. Yeah. Okay. Are y'all pep talking yourselves? So. Oh, there's a drawing. Oh, there's a drawing. Oh god. Yeah, this is one I had prepared. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of these got prepared. This one to do. Hold on up. Is this what Kevin does with your teaching? Oh, like the, your teacher's discount is like. Y'all just hang, hang on up. God forbid he spend time with his child in life. Hold right on up. Whatever you're doing. Look, to be fair, just be careful. Yeah, we don't have to DM because that's a stressful life. I'm so excited about the world map. I'll just hang I can't wait till we get there. That's gonna be cool. Because it's here. It's here somewhere. I swear it. I swear it to you. Thing. Yes. Hang on. Oh my gosh, okay, we're hanging. And the only reason I didn't use Blessing the Forge on you, Seraphina, or Liz, no is because I'm like, right. 
It's magic. Yeah. So. Yeah, fuck. I can't find it. That's fine. I'll just draw one up real quick. Huh? Nah, 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 one nah, nah. eternity later. I'm like, it's fine. That wasn't hard work at all. Yeah, that's that's not a problem. It's not okay. so crushing at all. So. Do you need a pen? Uh, yep. Or a marker. Pen's good. It's okay. I have it in my notes. <laughs> Yes, so you all uh, find your way to the Battle Barn at dusk. So when the Battle Barn starts, it's battlements. Uh, yes, so you do that. Uh, all, all come up to the Battle Barn. Uh, it's a very large building. Uh, in general, the, the city, the, the buildings of Cactus are very narrow. Uh, this is somewhat wider than your average building. Uh, Serafina. Yes. Make me a history check. Mm, and Davin, would you 17. mind? Seventeen. Could you make me one as well? Yes. History is gonna be plus two for you. Okay. Do we Six. Roll, roll? Okay. So Serafina, you're you're vaguely aware of the Battle Barn. You may have been in here once. It's kind of hazy. You don't really recall. Uh, but it reminds you, it's it's very true to your memory. Um, so you sort of walk in the doors coming off the streets. There are six uh, large swinging doors that come into this building. And already there are a few people kind of milling around. Uh, off in this section, there's uh, there seems to be uh, kind of an office over here. Over here is a bar um, that's uh, pretty already, again, pretty busy. This seems to be a pretty big drinking spot. Um, and off to the sides here and here are the sort of bench seats where people can watch. Already there are about 40 or 50 people ready to come and watch the Battle Barn. Um, as you guys walk up, uh, this, uh, this gnome comes up to you and says, Oh good, you're here with uh, Nandina, is that right? Yes. yes. Good. Good, 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 good. He goes, step right this way and he takes you over to the office which is actually a stairwell. Uh, and leads you down into the lower pits. Uh, so it's all very stone and sort of brick and dank. Uh, and from above you can hear kind of the, the sort of echoing and like of, of the people uh, milling about, drinking and socializing. Uh, there's a room for you all to get ready and there's a room across the way uh, for the opposing team. Uh, occasionally you get flashes of them. Uh, make me a perception check, Serafina and Hammer. Yeah, because I would probably still be upstairs. Yeah, because you've stayed up in, in the inspector Quick question. Yeah. So are they benches or bleachers? And if they're bleachers, is there access 13. under them to where I can go in and get some good old pickpocketing going? Yes, you'll be doing some pickpocketing. Thirteen. Six. Thirteen and six. Uh, so Hammer, you are wa- looking across the way. And uh, Serafina, you're too distracted. This is kind of too new for you. It's just kind of strange. Uh, but Hammer, you're looking across the way, and uh, you you see uh, f- across the entrance uh, one of the opposing team members. You hear, boom, 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 and it's a huge minotaur as he's just sort of dragging this great axe behind him, stretching and kind of like moving back and forth. Get me a little. And like, I mean, he's just enormous. Was he at the rodeo tonight? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's 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 all you can make out. That's the only time anyone sort of walks past. Uh, he doesn't look at you. Doesn't make eye contact. Do you I see have my him. cloak on at this point, or is it whatever you want to do, baby? Uh, I'm going to take my cloak off. I hope that mentor catches eye contact. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So yeah. You you look over, and you're aware that you're kind of about the same size. In or out of cloak. He's out of his cloak. Yeah. So, so he's out of the, his cloak. Out of his cloak, he's about the same size as this Minotaur. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's hot. Um, yeah. So, uh, eventually you hear the crowd sort of rise and this cacophony just sort of builds and this anxiety. You can feel the sort of sparkling tension that you know is leading up to this fight. And you hear these people sort of getting drunker and more anxious and more excited for this fight. You can just feel the kind of energy that's flowing through them. And eventually, these lights, these candles, are almost magically kind of dim. 
and it goes dark. And then they rise up. I'm assuming you poke your head out of the changing room to see the sort of change in light. And out in the middle is this tall elven gentleman. And he says, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Battleborn! And the crowd just goes, and just this cacophony, just this, 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 this din of noise of just different humanoids just uh, just enthralled by this this exciting uh, this exciting battle that's going to come forward and he says as always this will be three rounds best two of three in our first round in martial combat for the opposing team we have us we have Nandala Nandina whatever her fucking name is Nandina and you you see her sort of like stroll out and she just, you know, kind of meekly kind of goes out and bows to the audience. And the crowd goes, ah! and they're just excited for the, for the recurrence of this, this former champion of, of the Battle Barn. And he goes, in this corner, we have the recurring champion, Bruno! And you see this big, beefy dude who just, like, is wearing this, this sort of training belt. And he just and just and like hits his fists together and is just ready to ready to get shit done. He goes in this corner for the martial combat or simple combat melee combat melee combat. We have Hammer Forge. What do you do? I absolutely walk out. Okay. Oh, better to take your cloak off now. Oh, well, it's already off. And the I'm crowd on stage. gasps. Because <laughs> oh, they've never seen what he looks like. No one's ever seen him. Yeah, they, they've never seen you. Because he's a one of a kind. And there's silence. And then... They just start screaming at the excitement of this huge thing that's going to be fighting. Same. And in this corner... For melee combat, we have Golodax! And you see this huge minotaur come out with his great axe, and he gestures to the crowd, and they again, almost as loud as they were for you, just cheer for this, this man, this behemoth of a man. In this corner, for the arcane combat, hailing from Broadus, we have Serafina Luminosi! <sighs> And yes, when you come out, what do you do? I'm just gonna, you know, curtsy my head. Just give a little nod. Yeah, oh, you need to take your cool. three-horned hat and go. <laughs> yes. And in this corner, from the great city of Brandleburg, we have Assisi. This name means a lot to you, Serafina. Isn't that the, um, the professor or no. the person that worked? No. Okay, no. never mind. Sorry. This is your rival from Musiki University, the one who you believe perpetrated your acid attack. What? At what? That. So that's why my. That's why Serafina wears like a like a long sleeve, long black dress. Oh, it's because she was all by now. Because she has acid marks all over her. I thought you were born albino. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, she is albino and also an acid attack victim. I must have just missed the victim. acid phase. Yeah. Yes. So, yes, this is, uh, this is the, your rival uh, who you think perpetrated this. So you see... A CC? Yeah, a CC. So you see this sort of high elf woman step out. She's wearing this sort of long navy dress. Oh, let's get it. And she looks at you and smiles and winks. Oh, get it. Am okay. I allowed to cast any spells right now, or is that like nope. a no-no? You can't no, do no. spells. I'm not using it in combat. <laughs> you don't know. You don't know as a character. Damn it. But the answer, you... Uh, like I said, you don't know as a character. I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, and so, uh, the, the, the sort of... Uh, the two kind of people come out and kind of gesture you back into the, into the, the sort of holding chambers. Uh... Devin, oh, what are you, are you doing anything? Bleachers. You're just pickpocketing? Yeah. We're going to go ahead and make a sleight of hand check for you. Okay. And remember, it's plus eight. Okay, that's 18. So do you want to add eight to it? Yeah. Yeah, plus eight, yes. <laughs> yeah. So just 26. like a fucking ghost, you're just going around. As of now, in this first check for the first round, you found 125 gold. 
Ooh, wow. These people came out ready to pay some money, and you know that it is good mm-hmm. pickings. And I'm under bleachers. Yeah, so you're just getting that yeah. getting that coin. Hills, yeah, also cheering them on, too. Going, yeah. Go Team Nadina. I That's just imagine right. you like going to the betting table now, the betting thing, and be mm-hmm. like, I'm going to put 120 gold down on the... Yeah. Just imagine you betting. So let's go. So let's go. Again, the lights go down on this battle barn, and uh, Kevin has both pieces. Yes. Holy shit. Yes, it's better than my usual shit. Uh, and but isn't that the point of homegrown? Right. Exactly. Homebrew. Homebrew. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, so you, uh, the the lights come up. Everybody sing in. Uh, no, I'm kidding. And they, uh, uh, there is sort of this this bridge uh, that has appeared uh, in this, and it's just, I mean, just a second ago it wasn't there, and now it is. Oh, this is that shit that she was talking about. Yeah. So yeah, they've just sort of magically uh, altered this, and uh, from one end, uh, uh, from one end, uh, Nandina comes out. From the other end, Bruno comes out. And Nandina takes a second and breathes and takes the stance and gets ready for this fight. And on the other end, Bruno stretches, pumps his fists together, pops his knuckles, and they roll for initiative. Yes. So first up is Nandina. And as quick as a flash, she's across the bridge and immediately rains down this haymaker punch on Bruno. She comes down with one hit and it misses just as quick as she was ready. He flips back and she misses. She comes up with a flurry of blows and again, just, uh, just, I mean, like Mike Tyson fast, he just... Like you just would think he just knew which way the hits were coming. She's just flying these hits at him. And she falls back and takes again this patient stance, ready for his attacks. And he comes back. And the first hit, he hits her and just boom, right in the side in her ribs. And you just hear this crack as she she just hits her ribs. Her face does nothing. She a bad bitch. Stoic. She just hits and grimaces through it. He hits again. And misses. This time, she was ready. She goes, and he whiffs past her. So again, she sits back. She drops to her knees and does a leg sweep. And it's a hit. And he goes, and like his, his, he kind of loses his balance. She again hits with a flurry of blows. First one doesn't hit. She goes, whiffs. The second one, he wasn't ready. He lands and boom, he's knocked prone. The wind comes out of him with a poof. And he bah, is back on his back. And there she stands over him. So he takes half of his movement to get up. Ugh, and he steps back from her. And again, now he's taking the patient stance, ready for her attack. So she comes forward. And just as soon as she thinks that he sits down, she sits down. And as soon as she thinks he's not expecting it, bam, just a triple attack. Ooh, and they're all three hit. And he's just, you can tell he hasn't quite caught his breath back from being winded. And just pop, 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 right in his face, one in each kidney. And again, he just, just, and you see a little spittle of blood come out. And uh, uh, he he just kind of, he kind of, he kind of like hits his back. But he gets his fist back up, and he takes his two attacks. The first one whips, but the second one is just a solid hit. Just with all the meat in his hands, just just right in her temple. And she she spits out blood. You can tell that they're both just kind of getting bloodied. And they both just kind of step back and take a second, take a breath. She kind of steps back across the bridge, waiting for his next attack. And he lets out this guttural grunt, this and like runs across the bridge and jumps up with both of his fists ready to slam down on her and she's too quick for him and she and you see the stone crack from his mighty fists hitting it and she jumps back 
and he's down, he's got his fist down, and in that moment, she roundhouse kicks him. She goes, pop, and hits him, and then deftly, with the back of her heel, roundhouse kicks him. And you see that, like, in slow motion, his face goes, (laughs) and he looks for a second, and there's that moment of just dazed look, and he drops. And she stands back to give him a second. He doesn't get up. And the announcer comes out and goes, The first round goes to Nandina! And he comes out, raises her hand. The crowd explodes with excitement. They've been on bated breath up until this moment, just watching this fight, which took maybe 30 seconds. And just... So he takes Nandina off. And so she, they bring her in, and you guys see that she is hurt. She comes in. She's been holding it together for the crowd, but the second she comes in, she goes, and just vomits up blood, just, uh, 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 just barely holding it together. She's like, that was as bad as I remember it. That was as bad as I remember it, she says, kind of wiping the blood from her mouth. She goes, so hammer. Good luck. I think right. you're gonna do good. You got this hammer. Yeah, you got this hammer. And so, in the oh, darkness, the is still popping fireworks. as soon as the lights go down, the scene changes. <coughs> the scene it fucking changes, just if you believe it does. Yeah, it's just as like fucking magic. It's uh Yes. I will say the best part about being a player that's not really doing anything right now is I can eat all I want. Yes. Right? I can walk around. Yeah. So uh uh, the second round uh begins. And uh, the same, uh, the same elven man comes out. It says in the second round of combat, we have uh, for the challenging team, Hammerforge, and you come out, and the crowd has decided that you're the favorite because you're the shiny new toy. Yeah. You're this thing that they've never seen before. Wait till asks about poop. Yeah. Uh, and on this side, Golodex, and you see this again, hulking, sinewy, muscly minotaur with this great axe come out on the other end and he's going to be somebody he's going to be fucking th- this dude I guess pretend this is a minotaur <laughs> Kevin's like oh, uh, we have to go to the store tomorrow right <laughs> uh, while this is happening uh Dad, make me another slide of hand check if you're still picking done pockets. oh god am I still pickpocketing nat 20 yeah, <laughs> yeah. again like a <laughs> fucking ghost yeah pew, 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 just pew. again this time you're able to get 150 gold. Yeah, you're just cleaning up tonight. Because again, the fights are so good. That last round was one of the best the Battle Barn has seen in a long time. Yeah, I had a feeling that since we had two new characters and a classic, everyone was going to be coming out. Oh, yeah. Because I assumed she was on the sign-up sheet and everyone was like, oh, shit. You see Nandina's come in? Yes. Uh, so, uh, John. Uh, Hammer. Uh, you find yourself uh, standing against uh, this enormous, enormous uh, minotaur. And I need you to roll for initiative. Oh! Oh, oh wow! This isn't... I'm going last, unless you can beat uh, one. <laughs> the two. <laughs> wow, guys. It's going to be a fun fight. Look, so. we're, we're, we're very chill. We just, yeah. There's not a lot of initiative. Yeah. So. Oh, like, no, you go. No, you go. No, you yeah. go. Neither of you guys are particularly enthused about attacking one another. Uh, and so, uh, what he's going to do mm-hmm. is he is going to come up to you 
and he is going to uh, first he he has this great axe ready and from this distance he crouches down and sets his great axe down and from his back he pulls a javelin and then throws it at you Does a twenty-four hit? Yes, it does. Okay. <laughs> so you are going to take eight points of piercing damage, uh, and then he is going to uh, again just whip out another jab one and just throw it at you. Ooh, does a twenty-three hit? Yes, it does. Okay. And that's going to deal six points of piercing damage to you. Uh, and then he just sort of crouches down with his great axe ready for your strike. And of course, I'm going to charge at him. Okay. And I'm going to just swing my mace. Uh, I don't know how you... Yes. So... Scale. Make me a perception check. This will be a free action for you. I'll say you've done this before this battle. So oh, fuck my life. God. Ooh, you might want to switch dice, baby. What you got? Four. So I'm switching dice. Here, Give me a... Just play with this one. So you feel pretty calm and collected, but you're so focused on this minotaur that you can't quite get a really good lay of the land. You can tell that there are different levels that like this that there are different sort of levels of like stone and wooden platforms just kind of coming out at random it appears. But you can't quite get a good beat on where they are exactly. Um, so yeah, you can't tell what's on top of what, but you know that if you kind of misstep, you might have to like see if you can catch yourself. Do you charge at him? Yeah. Okay. So you go. Uh, each of these is five squares. What's your movement? Uh, thirty. Thirty. So He's you go 30. five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. You're just outside of his melee. Then I'm going to ready my shield. That's. So you can take the dodge action, which imposes disadvantage on the Okay, attacks. I'm going to do dodge then. Okay, and I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw moving between these two levels that you weren't prepared for. Hold on, that was 11. Uh, so it was just 11. I'm going to say you passed. It was a low DC. Uh, so yeah, again, you're not quite really ready for the step down, but again, you're just going directionally right at him, so it doesn't take you much much effort. Is, do- is dodge a bonus action? Dodge is an action. Okay, action. It's a bonus action for Mux. Uh, anyway, uh, so yes, so uh, yeah, so you, you're standing there and you're you've just sort of lowered your your hammer and you're ready to to, to take whatever attacks he, he gets at you. Um, uh, so uh, what he is going to do is he is going to uh, first leap up onto the second level here. Uh, still engaging in combat with you. He's about three feet above you. He's going to make a dexterity check, which he makes. And uh, he jumps up with his great axe and just sort of with sort of a, a lightness that you wouldn't expect from something so large. Uh, he, he's standing up there with his great axe and he takes two strikes at you with his great axe. Uh, so the first is... He's rolling fire. 23. It hits... So that is 1d12 plus 3. That is 14 points of damage. Son of a bitch. Uh, the next one is, I'm going to assume that a 10 does not hit. No, it doesn't. Yeah, so he's getting cocky. The first one, he just cleaves into like bet- a gap between your armor that he thinks he sees. So he's ready to come down on the other side. And he doesn't quite measure right and ping, bounces off of your armor. That's going to be his turn. What are you doing? Uh, I'm absolutely going to swing my mace. Okay. Make your attack. Oh, is this the big magic one? Yeah. Uh, eight plus another six, so fourteen. Fourteen does not hit. Yeah. So you you take your mace and he just okay, like here, limbo's back out the way. I need to understand the rule. Am I no spells at all? No. Okay, fine. I'm Can gonna, other people use spells on his behalf? If you don't get caught. No. I I'm gonna. If I was still share, I would throw him some, but you know. Uh, I'm going to end my turn. Okay. Okay. So this you do was, so? I was designed to lose this fight, wasn't I? No. You got a high AC, man. This is going to be a tough fight. So, uh, what he does 
is he's going to again attack you twice with his great axe. Uh, the first is a 20. Does that hit? Nope. Okay. Second one is less than that. So again, uh, again, now he's he's realizing how tough your armor is. He goes ting ting, and immediately he jumps off of this, and you get to, you get an opportunity Re- attack. I was like, I better get a reaction. Yeah. So you get an opportunity attack. Ten plus another six, sixteen. Okay. Uh, so that meets, so it beats. So roll for your damage. So you do hit him. So I need a d six. So it's four plus another four, so eight points of damage. Okay. So uh, you, as he's sort of popping down from this platform, uh, you see your opportunity, and with your mace, you uh, you swing out and uh, just manage to catch uh, sort of right in the small of his back with sort of one of the spikes of your mace, and, you, and lets out this sort of minotaur growl, but doesn't stop him. He goes five, ten. 15, he jumps up 20, 25, turns back 30. Shouldn't he have to do He's going to make a dex check. Which makes. So yeah, and again, he's just waiting for your attack now. He just settles down, ready for you. What are you doing? I'm going to move towards him. 5, 10, 15, 20... 25. Uh, can I hit him from there, or do I have to jump up or anything? Uh, so he is now five feet above you. So uh, so he gets plus two to his AC if you try to hit him from there. You can try to jump up and meet him up there, otherwise he's going to get what's basically kind of a wonky version of partial cover. You know what? I'll, I'll take a swing at him with my mace. Okay. Uh, that is a 17 plus another 6, so... Yeah, 23. that's, that's going to hit, so roll for damage. So I need to do 6. So it's 2 plus another... So 6 points of damage. Okay. Okay, so yeah, so you, you take your mace, and uh, this time you're able to just... Uh, you, you just swing it down right on his foot, and again, well, his hoof... And he, uh, he again, just out in pain. Uh, anything else you're done? Um, just kind of raise my shield and just pray it goes well. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, what he is going to do is he's going to raise his axe and just with all of his might swing down on you. Does a 23 hit? Yeah, it does. Okay. So you're going to take, uh, what is that in damage? So you're going to take, uh, oh, that's the wrong die, sorry. Uh, You're going to take nine plus three, so 12 points of damage. And I need you to make a strength saving throw. Uh, D20? Yeah, D20 plus your strength saving. So that is a 15 plus three, so, uh, yeah, 15 plus three, 18. Okay, uh, so you succeed, I think. Oh, sorry. So you are going to take a little more damage than that on a failed save. Well, what's the save? You were doing the save. No, I'm trying to figure out what what is, you're trying to save against. Uh, I'm going to say you succeed, but you're still going to take his extra superiority dice damage. Uh, so you can take two additional points of damage. Wow, this is going to end very quickly. But yeah, but you succeed. So, and then, uh, he's actually going to attack you uh, with his horns. Uh, so he's going to... Uh, does a... Oh, natural one does not hit. Uh, <laughs> no, it's going to just... No, it does not hit. Core uh, himself into the ground or yeah, something. Yeah, so he just tries, he's and just grinds against the ground trying to catch you. Um, and that is going to be the end of his turn. What are you doing? I'm going to swing my mace, which is the only thing I can currently do. Actually, my hammer. Okay. Uh, So you... uh, uh, Go ahead and roll for that. Okay, that needs to... Uh, 8 plus another 6, so 14. It's not hit. So yeah, he's on this sort of upper ground, 
and you swing, and he kind of whiffs at it. Uh, anything else you're doing? Just get her. Uh, you know, if I jump up there, is that going to provoke an opportunity? Attack? As long as you don't leave his melee, no. So if you were to say, like, cross here and jump up, you would not provoke it. Or if you'd crossed here and jumped up. Uh, I'm going to get jump up there. Okay. Okay, so you do so. 14. Yeah, you're able to jump up there. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so you, you jump up and you're up there with, with Golodex. So Golodex uh, is going to just for flavor try to just leap over you. He does so. Uh, and as he leaps, he's going to make an attack. I am going to guess that a 25 hits. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And he is going to deal nine points of damage to you. Yeah, and I'm dead now. You're, you're, you're unconscious? Yep. Yep. So, yeah, he, he does this sort of acrobatic leap over you. And as he does, he catches you in the chest with his great axe and knocks you down. And he stands over your unconscious body and accepts the crowd's grace as they say, Yeah, go on the decks! Yeah! Oh, holy! Don't get a fighter against a cleric of the forge. And, uh, yeah. And so immediately a cleric comes and whisks you back to the, to the, the, changing, the, the changing room. You don't even need to make a death save. And immediately you're, you're brought back to full health. That is some horseshit. I should have been allowed to use magic. He didn't. <coughs> He's and, a yeah. fighter. It's and yeah, and so you uh, you you go back to uh, back to where you're going. So uh, I'm a little concerned because my mouse has died. My trackpad uh, when I spilled whiskey on it. Uh, uh, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to stop my recording. Just uh, turn off the microphones. I think that's probably going to be the answer, but then I don't know how to save it. Do you guys have a USB microphone or a USB mouse? He should. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, technical difficulties. Apparently, when you spill scotch on things, they stop working. I've heard that about technology. Who knew? Whiskey River, take my mind. <laughs> Don't let her memory torture me. What is it? Big yeah, yeah, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. No, no. So that's probably I know. that. So, rah, rah. Kevin's like, looks like I'm going to Best Buy tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah, just peeping over here now. Oh. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. I guess so. Yeah, let's see. I think everyone here you've already run across at this point. Mmm, shock. Yeah. Coming now I was going to sit over here and run through his tissy spells. So I would pause this, y'all, but I can't do anything. Uh, yes. So. Uh... Immediate, so uh, yeah, he calls you off. Uh, Golodex goes off, and the stadium goes dark, and uh, this this sort of realm disappears. And uh, you would know, Seraphina, that your turn is rapidly approaching. Uh -huh. um, am I allowed to? I'm going to cast something before she goes out there. What, what is part of inspiration? Uh, no, I'm going to cast. Protection from energy on her. Okay, what does that do? Uh, for the duration, the willing creature you touch has resistance to one damage type of your choice. Acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder. I'm giving her acid. So John is clever. Because as soon as the, the lights come up, you see that there is this river of acid now. Oh God. In the middle. And, okay, this is fine. And uh, you can't see it, but over here is the same brickwork. But in the middle is this sort of river of acid. And uh, so uh, you you come out, and uh, again, the, the same high elf uh, says, In this corner we have a sissy! And she she strolls out. And of a course the, the, crowd, the crowd, of course, knows her. And they and she sort of gestures to them all and waves with her sort of nimble hands. And uh, on the other side, we have Serafina Luminosi. And you you enter from the the, the, the changing area. Uh, Devin, make a slide of hand. Yep. Oh my god. Plus eight. Plus eight. Fifteen. Okay. So this time, there are a few pockets that you think. 
I probably shouldn't get that one. You can just kind of tell that maybe they're starting to kind of sober up. The night's kind of coming to an end. You're only able to find about 60 gold this round. Wow. Oh, only 300 gold for a night. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. crime pays, everyone. Uh, so, yes. So, you, you come out from your side of the changing room here. And... Uh, there, uh, there is your rival, a sissy, with this big shit-eating grin. Uh, she just kind of looks at you and says, I put in a special request for this one, Seraphina. thought you would appreciate it. I love it. And immediately, see you. you both just crouch down ready to go. I need you to roll for initiative. Oh, fucking seven. Well, she only rolled a five, okay. so... Suck it, sissy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Serafina, it is your turn. What are Eldritch you doing? Blast. Okay. <laughs> Just one? No, I'm going to use my sorcery point. Okay. So you expend a sorcery point to send four Eldritch Blasts her way. Roll for yep. damage. Um, okay, so it's a 1d10. No, you need to roll for the attack. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, yeah. DC. So, four attacks, d20s each time, plus your spell attack modifier. Are you good? So your spell attack modifier is two. Here, uh, plus six. Okay. Yeah. So plus D20 six plus six. Roll. Yeah, plus six to see if you hit. So you can do it. So D20 plus six. 17 plus six, 23. So the first one hits. Uh, keep rolling, though. 15 plus six each time? Yeah, 15 plus six. All right, so 21. 21. Okay. 16. Hits. 23 and 12. Okay, so Perfect. all of them hit. <laughs> so roll roll your roll 4d10 to see what kind of damage you do. And then is it plus 6 or no? 5 1 7 6. So you Five, deal what's it 19 six. damage? So you just roll out of the gate. And you just immediately just boosh, these four branches of eldritch energy just boosh, and just clamp down on her. And she just screeches in agony as she's just pincered between all of these eldritch blasts. And you, fair no. Uh, yeah, she. Oh, 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 just kind of takes a breath for a second. And she looks at you, and she says, oh, oh, you're going to regret that. And she... I have a quick question. Yeah. Do I cast shield before or after, or like during an attack? Uh, so you cast it as a reaction. So as soon as it happens, you can say, I'm casting shield. Okay. And do that. Okay. Uh, yes. So uh, she looks at you. And she takes a bit of back guano in one hand and sulfur in the other and slaps them together in your direction. And a huge boosh, fireball explodes right at your feet. And you should make me a dexterity saving throw. So whatever your dex modifiers. It's going to be a six. Okay. So you're going to fail. You're going to take 8d6 of damage. So you're going to take 27 points of damage. Are you serious? Yes. Uh-huh. How many hit points do you have? 29. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's just normally it's usually happy to share. Yeah. So. <laughs> so immediately as you just think that you just destroyed her, uh, she turns around and just blows your ass away. And you slam up against the wall. And scrooch down, you're still conscious, but just barely. And you lock eyes with her across the, the hell. And you can tell that you're both pretty hurt. Hellish rebuke. Okay, you can use that as a reaction. So uh, remind me what that does. Um, I am being damaged by a creature within 60 feet that I can see. Point my finger. They creature is... 
momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. They must make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. And it takes 2d10 fire damage on a failed save. Okay. Or half on a successful. Uh, so she only rolled... Oh, wait. The damage increases by 1d10 for each slot level above first. So I'm level 5 now, yeah? So no, you, you can select what kind of spell slot you want it to Oh, spend. Oh, never mind, never mind. Yeah, so uh, you have a third level spell, so you could do 3d10. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay, I'll take so she turn. failed her dexterity save. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So roll your d10, so roll 3d10. And that will be the damage she takes. Spellcasters do not battle long. <laughs> Apparently. Eight, yeah. One. Three. Eight, one, and three. Mm-hmm. Twelve. Okay. So yeah. So she looks at you with this with this wide-eyed grin, the same grin that you knew the first time that she had uh, after she saw you after you you had you had had this acid thrown on you, and immediately this anger, this white hot anger boils up inside of you and your tiefling blood just boils and immediately these flames boosh and she screeches in agony as she just collapses in this bodily heap to the ground and she just keeps screaming and the flames just keep going as they just glow in your eyes and you feel this vengeance that you've wanted for so long just creep over her and she says stop and you just don't Mm -mm. stop and just these flames just are just lapping her body and immediately they disappear and you see her hand just creep up shakily and collapse to the ground she's unconscious and the crowd goes mother fucking wild (laughs) and just screams screeches Davin could you make me another sleight of hand check Mm -hmm. she's gonna keep stealing shit because this is a great opportunity to steal. Plus eight. Plus eight, that's gonna make it twenty-three. Yeah. So yeah, in this I just sort take of the purse at this point. In this exaltery moment, you literally cut a few purses. Yeah. And you were able to find Yes. Uh you were able to find four platinum pieces. Ah uh, ha ha! Uh seventy gold pieces. Platinum. As everyone who's coming out of the battle barn is like, where is all of my shit? So like, no rings, no nothing like that. I'm just no, gold. That's it's fine. just all gold and platinum at this yeah. point. Yeah, everybody just came out ready to spend money, and you took it all. They uh, spent it. Yes, and you, Serafina, are just standing over this body of your rival, and you hear the voice of Andorra in your head saying, "I knew I chose well." That's so weird. You're like, gonna ugh. Such gross foreplay. <laughs> and uh, you you walk your way off the stage and the the, the, the the clerics drag off a sissy, her sort of limp burned body, and the acid disappears. And you find yourself in the room with uh, with Hammer and uh, and Nandina. So what happens from here? Yeah, so you, um, you guys have a moment before. I think we're going to go ahead and collect our winnings. Yeah, I think that's... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, do they have any kind of, like, um, medication on staff or, like, anybody brewing up some good berries? I'll or, like, just cast yeah. Yeah. Just so, so, Is yeah. a healer on yeah. staff? After, after a second, the, 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 the clerics them? come up to you, and they're already kind of working on Nandina, and they're sort of healing her up. They kind of come up to you and they, they, they sort of they cast a couple of cure wounds on you. I just imagine Seraphina being like, no, don't worry about her, she's fine. Yeah, she's fine, do me. Uh, no, uh, yeah, and eventually, yeah, they bring you up to full health. You don't recover your spell slots, but you're up to full health. Because, yeah, this is they're very much sort of sport medicine people. They're, they immediately, as soon as you're damaged, heal you because they don't want real damage happening here. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep. Okay. Yes, uh, and as soon as you're all healed up, uh, a few men come in and they're like, "Okay, come on, it's time, it's time for the ceremony." And they kind of, kind of lead you all out, 
And as soon as uh, as soon as you and Hammer and then Dina come out, the crowd again just erupts. <sighs> I mean, you look up in the stands, and it's easily 200 people packed in, standing room only. They're lapped up against the rails. And he says, The winner by two out of three knockout is Serafina Luminosic Hammer Forge and Nandina. Your prize for this bout is two thousand gold. And they bring out this sort of huge purse and hand it, I guess, to you, Hammer, because you're just sort of the biggest person. You're sort of standing there like... <laughs> the crowd again... I'm going to lift over my head. And yes, uh, eventually, yeah, you're, you're allowed to go back up. And yeah, the, the crowd is all still there, and, and you're just celebrations all for you. You don't see... And that's why you don't have cats. Yep. Uh, and you don't see you don't see any of your rivals. You think maybe they went out a back door. You don't know what happened. But you I can't don't, see them. They're I gone. can't find them. Yeah, they're gone. Just the shame of this. They're just yeah. In this moment, they've just they've just exited. I think we did good. I think so too. Um, Hammer and uh, Nandina, you guys want to meet yeah. back at the at the dreadlock? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go. I uh, left field and get some air, so I'll see yeah. you guys in just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. So as you're walking out, um, a man dressed in all black stops you, Serafina. And uh, and he he just kind of says, he kind of gestures you over to a corner. Do you follow him? I'm gonna say, um, I'm I'm a little busy. Is there something I can help you with? He says, of course, a woman of your power is always busy, but I think the black hand would love a word with you. And he gives you just a single piece of paper. Uh, it's just a very sort of small, maybe about this big, and all that's on it is the image of a black hand. And he says, we're always looking for talent. Mm. Do I see this at all? Am he I winds in. Make a perception check if you're looking. Make a perception check as well, Davin. I'm done with this dice. That's my perception. Uh, oh, shit balls. Why would you ask me such a reasonable question? Because it didn't hurt my character. I'm done with this dice. This dice needs to go away right now. Okay, so you're, you're yeah, to you didn't get it. Dice. Maybe uh, perception plus two. Okay, that's going to be 16. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say you see this. Okay. Yeah, so you see, you see this man in a cloak come to her, hand her a piece of paper, and then he says, you know, we'll find you. Kind of disappears back into the crowd. Um, I'm just gonna tuck it into my pocket. I gotta go. Okay. Um, I am. I am looking for any sign of a sissy. Okay. Make an investigation check. That's such a bad name. Saint Francis of a sissy? No. Okay. Well, no, but I'm looking for any six. signs of a sissy. Oh, that's oh. Good. yeah, <laughs> six. So you feverishly look around the area of the battle barn. You're 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 looking in and and what you I mean back streets anywhere around and it seems like uh, seeing you and being humiliated she just beat feet out of there. Just as quick as she could. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to go into the office. I want to go back into the battle barn into okay. the office and okay. see if I can find like their, you know, manager person. Okay. So, so, so um, you're able. Uh, I'll say you're able, you're able to find that sort of the same elf guy who was sort of the okay. announcer. He says, "What can I do for you?" Um, great voice, first of all. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I can't turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> um, side note, just for no yeah. date. Did we split the two thousand? It's whatever y'all want to do. No, we'll discuss that later. Okay. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to ask, is it possible for you to put me in contact with the sissy? I just, we used to go to school together and I kind of feel bad about what, you know, what happened. And I just kind of wanted to 
apologize to her. He goes, I would, but I don't have a way to contact her. Have you tried Faro Faro Faro? No, I thought someone around here may know where she's staying or, you know, a way to get in touch with her. Make a persuasion check. Ten. He goes, I'm sorry, I don't know. Well, thank you for your time. You have a great night. You as well. Okay. Um, okay. I just, oh, I really got to figure out. Um, okay, well, is, I guess I'm just, I'm going to head to the dreadlock so that I can meet up with Nandina and, uh, Hammer. Okay. So yeah, you all eventually find your way back to the dreadlock. Uh, Davin included. Yes. Of course, everyone everyone finds their way back to the dreadlock. And that is where we're going to end the episode. Yeah, how are we going to split this gold? That's my thing. We hope you've enjoyed the podcast. Please rate, review, and follow us wherever you find us. You can listen to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, and YouTube. Please also take the time to follow and like us on social media, on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You can find more information about our podcast and where to find us at our website, dungeonswith.com. And as always, roll well, my friend.